Hello again and welcome to another episode of Elections on Kaya. I am Danyati here and my goodness, the political temperature is certainly heating up. Now, today we decided to hone in on one province, home to South Africa's economic hub, which is Johannesburg, but also uh, plays homage to, I suppose, the richest square mile, not only in this country, but on the continent. It goes without saying that the stakes couldn't be higher around who ultimately uh, takes over the reins in this province. And so we decided to hone in on two of the brave ones, as they say, uh, candidates who are vying for the uh, premiership position in the province. So let's jump straight into it, introduce our guest. Funzi Ngobeni is with Action SA. He's the Houting Premier candidate. We're also joined by Nobuntu Shazo Webster, who's with Build One South Africa, the new entrance, um, who also is with us. To both our guests, lovely to see you at this busy, busy time. <laughs> Thank you for popping by. And we'll jump straight into it. You know, we now know, yeah. given a, a recent update from the IEC, that Houting's actually one of the most contested provinces in the country. No surprises about that. 42 political parties, two independents. The obvious question still needs to be asked, which is, Nobuntu, why on earth anybody should choose you? That is a good question, and that's a question I love to hear. Um, so thank you for having us, and thank you for this platform. Um, important to have the discussion and to hone in on Gauteng because it is the political battleground in yep. this election. So the reason you've got to choose me, the reason you've got to choose Build One SA, is that we have tabled a plan that is particularly for Gauteng. Gauteng has been historically the economic hub in the country. Um, and when we look at it today, you can't say that's what it is. You can't say that Gauteng is the economic hub when you have an electricity and water crisis that looks the way it does, particularly most recently the water crisis. You can't say that when you have the levels of unemployment that we have in the province. You cannot say that um, when we're looking at the state of businesses, particularly small businesses in this, in, in this province and the way that is. And so my own experience has been, first of all, in working as a in, in, with a consulting firm that speaks to economic development. And so I've worked in economic development for um, various provinces, mm. consulting to them. That's the first thing. The second is that I'm a competent and capable and ethical leader. I think when we look at the various policies, when you look at the various plans, what we can all agree on is that there aren't many that you can fight and say are completely bad. But the issue has been with the implementation of that and having the right people and capable people that are in that position and are able to really be able to deliver on those plans. Yesterday, we were in um, Citibank and the issue there is with housing. Generally in Gauteng, we have an issue with housing. We have 1.2 million people that are on a waiting list for housing have been approved, some as long ago as 1996. Now, the is a plan to house people, but it hasn't happened and isn't happening. And it's because we've got the wrong people in leadership. We don't have competent leaders. We don't have ethical leaders in, in leadership. Lastly, and I think most importantly, I have always been someone who's worked with communities and in communities. I've been in business and I've worked with community-led um, organizations and I sit on a number of board of community-led organizations. And at my heart and at my core is delivering to communities. I understand communities. I understand the challenges of communities. And particularly in these past 18 months, I have every single week been on the ground in Gauteng, all over Gauteng, understanding the different dynamics, the different challenges, the, the dreams, the visions of Gauteng people. And as I've gone through, I've, I've put together a plan and tabled a plan that speaks to those exact challenges, that speaks to those exact ambitions and visions and missions at the goal mm. of, 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 of Gauteng people and what they'd like to see, right. particularly what Gauteng can do for the rest of the country. Indeed, and we'll speak about the potential in a moment. Funzi, your opening remarks? Yeah, no, look, I think we we we, are, we fully agree with um, a lot of the points that you know, Nubuntu has raised. It's also some of the issues that we have um, that we are championing. But in the main, um, our offer is um, it's, it's it's linked to economic development, and we look, we're talking about the infrastructure of Houthi, um that uh, has dilapidated, that um, has uh, reached its um, its sell by date. And uh, which infrastructure we are referring to? We are referring to uh, roads and infra roads and right. logistics. We are referring to the um, um, you know the the the, the 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 energy as well, um, energy infrastructure. We are referring to 
um, um, even uh, going into the into the sector of um, of um, yeah, I mentioned roads, I mentioned um, electricity, but it, it's important that we we realize that th that infrastructure is dilapidated. Um, and um, I was just now um, at uh, the and um, doing a um, a press conference there. We're talking about water and sanitation infrastructure. Um, uh, all those has really um, been left not maintained in many instances, has not been developed for many years, and um, and that has affected the, the economy of Gauteng uh, in a big way. Um, you look at, um, uh, at the inner cities of Gauteng, um, not only in Johannesburg, you look at Swani, you look at uh, Ekuruleni, you even look at other municipalities, um, you know, um, on the outskirts, they've got inner cities as well, they've got, um, and which has also been left uh, to ruin. Um, so for us, we are saying, let's um, let's start there. You know, let's get the basic rights. Um, let's fix our infrastructure, and that will also then speaks to attracting the you know the investment into the province. Yeah. Um, it's important um, uh, that I highlight that because um, uh, the biggest issue that affects uh, people of Houting is uh, lack of jobs. Um, and, and and people are saying, which party is going to uh, bring a a, a, a solution um, to young people who are unemployed, but also to uh, those that have been retrenched uh, due to you know factories and manufacturing businesses closing in Gauteng and and leaving people um, you know on the street and, and, and in poverty. So we are bringing in um, a plan to be able to bring them into the into the into the economy, um, and and we are looking at. Um, at, at infrastructure as a man, how, how do we link uh, our roads um, to health sectors? How do we link our roads um, to uh, housing developments that are closer to economic um, opportunities? And how do we make sure that all that eventually, um, you know, results in people getting employed? So right. uh, for us, the, the core is really to uh, get people into jobs. All right. Those are broad stroke takes, which I appreciate because we, of course, laying the foundation. I'm hoping to drill into the details. And since you've mentioned jobs, we might as well go straight into that, right? The ANC's candidate has the advantage of incumbency, right? And I know there's a blurring of the line sometimes around what government is doing and what the state, I mean, what the party itself has been involved with. But like it or not, Nasi Spani is ringing through the roads of Gauteng, so to speak. And I wonder what your counter offer is to something like that, which people have heard, which people are trying out, and which some people say is working. South Africans are not stupid. People uh, understand and know and have the lived experience of an ANC government. And so while there's a Nasispani program, and we understand that's all electioneering, really, People know how life has been for the past five years, for the past 10 years, for the past 15 years. And as you engage with citizens, you get to understand that they're not fooled by that. But also the proof is in the pudding because mm. as we sit now, there are people who've been employed in that Nasispani program that have been being paid. That's, that's a reality. There are people who were told to come to these um, grand shows of, of stadium um, employment and arrived and didn't get the jobs. So there is the reality of what then happens with a gimmick like that. And people are aware of that and people understand that. But like I say, most importantly, people know the lived experience that they've had over the past 10 to 15 years. Our own plan as it pertains to um, creating employment, our very manifesto is called the jobs plan because it's the it's the focus of what we need to do in this country and in this province mm. and so we have five areas that we have honed in on and looked at in terms of how do you then make sure that you create employment the first of these is to focus on the township economy now the reality is that the mainstream economy cannot cannot absorb the level of unemployment that we have over 40 percent by the expanded definition um and a close to 70% of youth unemployment. And so we're focused on township economy, on investing in township economy through what we've called a jobs and justice fund. Through the jobs and justice fund, what we'll be able to do is invest in businesses that are in key sectors that we need to be growing, like manufacturing in this country, like the digital economy in this country. Secondly, we'll be able to skill, because that's another issue that we have, is that we ranked um, more than 150 50 something um, by way of when it when it pertains to our skills levels and mm. and where we're at as a country we need to be able to invest in our skills and so so how do you identify these companies that you want to invest in in townships 
So these companies and townships will obviously apply like every other program. Right. The difference is that you've got to have professionals that oversee, professionals that oversee, uh, first of all, in the financial sector that oversee that fund. Because if you have politicians being the ones who oversee a fund or officials, then that's where you start to have your problem. That's the first. But they will be identified through programs um, uh, that, that are similar to what we've had and that people will apply. They will show their skills. They will show their business plans. And there will be a proof points that are looked at in order to make sure that people um, are able to deliver on the plans that they have. What you have to have that's different is that you have to have a stronger underwriting from government than what we've had as it pertains to small businesses. The real difference in our plan is that whereas now if you go to a CIFA, the credit record is an issue, um, uh, history of, of, of credit is an issue. Those are things that have to be underwritten by government if we're going to change things. I mean, I remember being a young person um, applying to the NYDA for a business loan and being asked for a payslip. But I was like, but I'm an entrepreneur mm. and I'm trying to build a business. Why, how, why do I need to have a payslip um, in order to be able to, to get funding? So that's the, 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 the key difference is people will have to show their skills. They will have to show uh, proofs in their business plan, but we'll underwrite a little bit higher than government does. Uh, in fact, significantly higher than business does and making sure that businesses are able to get that funding All and right. that investment. And, and Funzi, a big issue is usually barriers to entry, right? I mean, I suppose nobody has touched on that in a way, asking for things that people simply don't have. Experience is another very common one. 27-year-old has never worked a day in their life, but they did their part, which was to go to school and get the degree. How does Action SA get them a job? Yeah, I mean, the, the young people who are leaving school needs to be accommodated somehow, you know, um, and we are proposing that we're going to uh, bring them into the into the public sector. Uh, voluntarily, they can uh, go and work there, um, whether it's in military, whether it's in police, uh, so that they can get experience. Um, Many will um, tell you that the public um, sector is falling apart. They don't want to go there. What's your response to that? Yeah, no, they, they, I think there's, uh, I mean, uh, it's a choice. It's voluntary, you know. Um, that's an option that they can tap on. And, it, and, and, and but over and above that, we, 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 we want to make, make sure that, it, that this economy is able to absorb them. So we've got this opportunity fund that we are, that we've been talking about. It's, um, 30% yeah. of that opportunity fund. It's going to be directed towards, um, towards small, medium uh, enterprises so that we can be able to, uh, support them. And these barriers can be removed, you know, um, uh, through ensuring that they get, uh, they get funding there. Um, but we also acknowledge that most of our, of our labor, and people who are unemployed are unskilled. Um, and, and, and that's uh, obviously the, the consequence of our education system. That's a consequence of our, of our history as a country. Um, and the, most of them, um, if you look at places like Hamanskral, you look at areas like Harankua, they were absorbed by factories and manufacturing uh, industries that were surrounding uh, that area. And most of them have closed down, you know. Um, uh, some of them have moved to Roslyn and so forth. But um, uh, 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 most of them are sitting at home. Mm. So how do we absorb them? And th that's what we are saying. Let's take over these um, factories that are dilapidated. Let's give them to the private sector, uh, those that have got means to be able to redevelop them. And, and, and then and, and let's let's give them conditions. You know, um, we did that in the city of Johannesburg with uh, with with Mashaba when he was the mayor, and uh, there was a lot of uptake uh, from the private sector. So it's, let's let's take over these buildings, let's uh, rejuvenate them, um, let's turn them into into student accommodation, into business hubs, and um, and and let's con start you know, developing artisan skills for the country for the future as well. So right. so those are things that we have to do because uh, unfortunately we we have to do something. For for young people, but you must never forget the over 35s that uh, that are sitting at home sure. because they've been retrenched and so forth. Fair enough. Uh, you know, as you're speaking, uh, of course, Action SA and, and Busa have things that are different, but there's also a lot that's in common. And I'm going to take it to both your leaders and their political histories. A common question that's come up in our interacting with potential voters is this idea of uh, people seemingly, right, at the level of perception, not committing to a certain political idea. And it doesn't help that both Herman Mashawa and Busi Baibane once belonged to the same organization and are now preaching a completely different message. The question becomes one of assurance, really, more than anything else, that the promises as they laid out here at the moment are promises that you'll see through once the opportunity to actually see them through arises. Briefly, let's address that. What is your question exactly? Um, what's your response to voters mm -hmm. who are worried because of a trust deficit 
in the political system that because people change their allegiances over time, that that will happen once again once they give you their vote. Look, um, Musi Maimane was with the DA for over 10 years. Um, and really, the, 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 the move was one of a principal move um, in terms of him and, and on that basis. And, you know, we started, I'm co-founder of Build One SA, and we mm. started Build One SA because there was nothing that looked like it um, as an alternative in this country. And when I say that is that our model is about um, choosing leaders from communities, asking communities to choose their own leaders. Our candidates are all endorsed uh, by communities, by at least 1,000 signatures of communities, and they will be nominated by communities. And that's something that's different. So in, 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 in leaving the DA, really the reality is that there was a principal, um, there was a principal issue there. But in starting Build One SA, Build One SA is something that is different, is something that is committed um, to making sure that South Africans are duly and, and, and really represented um, by people who are chosen by communities. There's a commitment to stick that through. And there's a commitment to make sure that in everything that we do, it is representative of communities. So whether, regardless of who's there and who's not, that principle remains and that model remains. And whatever we're doing, even in our policies, remains a representation of what South Africans want. So that is the, that is the essence of the party. And what you can be committed to is that whatever happens will always be something that's come from communities, that's endorsed by communities, and that is representation of communities. All right, Funzi, you've also worn yeah. a different T-shirt before. Yeah, yeah, of course. And we, I think um, we always say that uh, people must judge us on what we do rather than what we say. Because we, we are going around the country, around the province, uh, making a lot of, um, of, 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 of commitments and promises. Um, but they must, uh, they must look at our track record. And uh, the nice thing about South Africa is that we vote every second year. You know, it's national. You're going to have local government. If we fail them and we don't deliver on what we have said... And they've got an opportunity to punish us in two years' time. They don't have to wait for 20 years, 30 years, two years. They can be able to say, you have... So the, the positive about um, our president is that he was a mayor for three years. Uh, he ran uh, one of the most successful uh, coalition. Um, I was um, in, uh, in the executive with him and I was working as a leader of executive business. We managed our coali coalition for three years without any problem. And um, remember, we also had EFF, which was not in the coalition, but we managed to work with them. And, uh, and we delivered in three years. In many cases, people are saying in that three years, we, we delivered more than the party that was there for more than, for more than 20 years. An issue of title deeds, for example. Um, we, we, we gave out title deeds, more title deeds than what Park Star and the team that worked with him for 10 years couldn't do, you know. Um, so with political will, with leaders of integrity, people that, are, that love their country, that are patriotic, um, they will be, able, will, be, will be able to deliver. And, um, but we are, we are quite clear that, um, uh, you know, voters um, must, uh, must not wait for many years mm. to punish politicians. They must be able to use this democracy um, to their benefit because right. that vote, it's, um, it's, it's the weapon that they have to deal with politicians. And if we do that... Um, <laughs> the last couple of years, if that's anything to go by, then a lot of punishment needs to be dished out, right? Especially when you look at how coalition governments, especially in the Gauteng, have fared over the past couple of years. And so I'm going to ask you mm. that question because Action SA has experience insofar as this is concerned, right? Things haven't gone well, let's face it. And we see it in the material conditions of Gauteng uh, residents. The streets, even in the leafy suburbs, aren't in the states that they should be. And that's a direct result, some people might say, of politicians ultimately not being able to get down with the job. So if you're judged on that performance, do you reckon Action SA should be punished? I mean, we have been uh, one of the coalition partners that have uh, hold our colleagues accountable uh, without fear. Um, we don't go into coalition uh, to make friends or to, uh, when you are doing something wrong, we must then uh, try and defend you and close ranks, as ANC and others will say. Give us an example of that happening. I mean, in, 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 in Swani and uh, the issue of Royval, um, you know, we, we held the mayor accountable, um, uh, um, uh, Mayor Randall. Abrahams, you know, up until the, his party had to take a decision to remove him. It was not by choice, it was because we as Action SA, we said there's something wrong that this man has done. Um, there's, there's corruption that has happened in the value chain there and people need to be held accountable. He was not willing to take action and we complained to the coalition about it up until he was removed. There was a, um, a, 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 a deal that was supposed to happen, um, selling off of, uh, of our infrastructure, electricity infrastructure in Swani. We had to um, ensure that 
that report doesn't go to council and uh, and that the right process needs to be followed. So we hold them accountable every time when they do something wrong. The strike that happened in Swan, which it shouldn't have happened in the first place, you know, we stood up as a coalition partner and said, this must end. And we brought in the, 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 the unions um, and we sat around the table. The strike was, um, was resolved. So we are saying that it's possible. Coalitions can work if parties respect each other. But also most important, uh, Ayanda, is that we need a government at the provincial level to also play their role. Remember, there's COCTA there, you know, and COCTA has a constitutional responsibility of holding municipalities accountable. But every time you know? the ANC's MEC tries to intervene, he's accused of political interference. No, no, no. Um, uh, there's, there's laws that need to be followed. I mean, let's make an example with M. Fulani, for example. Uh, you know, uh, 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 the provincial government supposedly intervened in 2018. Um, nothing has happened. In fact, things got worse there because they were not intervening genuinely. They were going there to loot themselves as a provincial administration. You know, they tried to do that in Swani. Well, they, they, you know, for for about what eight months, ten months, they were in government. They messed up. You know, and but the court had to intervene and say, but the process we followed is incorrect. So I'm saying, Cocta has a constitutional responsibility of interfering in municipalities, but they need to do that. And partisan, and they need to do that within the prescript of the law. And that is what we are intending to do. We, need, we want to use that cocktail office to be able to get municipalities to work, uh, to get them more funding as well, because they need funding. And, um, and, and we, need, we need to be the one that's, that's between us and national, uh, local government and national, be the one that facilitate that funding and being able to ensure that even their IDPs, you know, when they craft these IDPs, we need to direct them as to how we want Houten to grow. All right. You know, so that's, that's, that's the role that we're going to play at the provincial level. The advantage for Busa is it's a relatively clean slate. Um, and I'm sure you're watching from the outside and are hearing the concerns from communities when it comes to potentially splitting their vote and sharing the spoils, so to speak, of Gauteng. How is Busa hoping to affect that dynamic? Look, I think as South Africans, for a long time, we lived in a one-party dominant um, kind of government, mm. and we got used to that as a norm. But when you look at um, how we are structured, we really are set up for a multi-party democracy. And I think we have to, as South Africans, start engaging and embracing that kind of governance. And as Build One South Africa, we are very ready to work with um, other political parties. Uh, including Action SA. Including Action SA. <laughs> okay. uh, absolutely. Because we have to. That's how it's going to that's how that's how it's going to have to work. First of all, we have to make sure that as it pertains particularly to coalitions, we have the right kind of frameworks at the start and we're in it for the right reasons. One of the issues that has happened is that people come in into the negotiation table and they're discussing coalitions on the basis of who gets what. The spoils, as you say, who gets which position, um, who has proximity to the purse. And that's really what's the con I mean, we've already just heard um, the EFF saying that going to coalition with ANC at national level uh, provided um, a, 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 a I think Floyd Chivambo has Chivambo given finance. Uh, Minister of Finance. Right. And it, it can't be about that. It's got to be, first of all, what do we what, what do we feel we're strongest at? as a party. We, I mean, we feel very strongly about our jobs plan. Like I said, I spoke to you about uh, our jobs plan, about township economy. We have plans of making township special economic zones. We have plans of having um, special certificates for upskilling um, of, of, of youth in townships. All of that. We feel strongly about that. And we've done a lot of work in that. And that is something that we would want to make sure that we're able to table and that we're able to implement. So let's have a conversation about that rather. If Funzi says, I feel strongly about infrastructure, let's have that conversation about how how do you then, what you have expertise in and what you've worked hard on, how do you have the opportunity to implement that? Let us implement this aspect of it and let's have that conversation. Let's also have frameworks that govern how this coalition works. How many motions of no confidence are you able to put on the table? Under which circumstances are you able to, as a coalition, put those motions of no confidence on the table? Those are the conversations that we must have and those are the frameworks that must govern these coalitions that we go into. It's interesting. What we know so far with just weeks to go to the elections is the demographics of who's going to be voting, right? Um, the IEC telling us that I think it's 58% of people who are registered and who are on the voters roll are women. And then you directly contrast that with the percentage of women candidates who are vying for a position either in the national or provincial legislatures and it doesn't square up, right? So there are more women voters, but there are fewer women candidates, right? People who are watching this very closely might have their own questions around why that is. And I don't want to 
be stereotypical in any way. So either one of you who's able to uh, speak to that uh, is, is, is free to do so. And hopefully you can offer a solution, right? Because I don't think women are not interested, for example, in politics. So what is it about our body politic that's not resonating? I feel very strongly about this. Go for this. it. <laughs> I, of course, feel very strongly no. about this. Mm. So a couple of things. Um, our society, first of all, it's a societal issue. It's how women are positioned. It's how women are viewed in society. But the more you see of women in leadership who are leading credibly, who have their own agency, who are not there as proxies of men and their own agendas, the more we'll be able to trust women and see mo more women in leadership. That's the first I've got to say. The second is the media has a very big role to play in this. The media will, when inviting, um, for instance, guests to a conversation like this, invite them by name. Um, I believe I was invited by name to this conversation. Well, I'm a premier candidate. It makes sense. Mm -hmm. But the media plays a very important role. They are candidates. And the media plays an important role in making sure that there's platform that's given to those women candidates. That's important. The media has a role to play um, in making sure that we hear the voices of those candidates and see those candidates. Lastly, the parties themselves. So um, as I've mentioned before, I'm co-founder of BOSA. And when we started the party, I had lots of women asking for a women's league or a women's chapter. And I resisted against that and said no, because what is likely to happen when a party is still young, is that women candidates, women leaders will then most likely, you know, run to being in the to leadership in the women's chapter and not in the party itself. Mm. So, so the obvious question is, why aren't you the Busa leader? Then? To give up. Well, I'm not the Busa leader because we have somebody who's more experienced than me. And because I'm one of the people that wanted him to be leader in this instance, doesn't mean I won't be leader. But having said that, we also lead together we lead the party together we make decisions together um and and we, we co-lead the party and that's important for people to know as well people make an assumption that mostly because i'm a woman i'm there and i'm a token and whatever it is i see that all the time and that's not true and that's not real so our leader is a man because it's a decision that a collective of us made i was one of those people because of the experience that he has because of the recognizability favorability but most importantly because he's the right person to lead this chapter this season of the start of our party doesn't mean that he's going to be the leader of the party right. for till kingdom come okay and i think i mean um on our side we are uh, i think all of uh, all of us we are we are new parties and we we, as we grow, you know, I think we'll get more. But um, on, in our case, for example, here in Gauteng, I think uh, on our list um, that's going to legislature, um, the top 10, I think, is dominated by women. It's probably 6 to 40, um, you know. Um, and, and that didn't happen because uh, we were engineering it. Um, it happened because capable women came forward. And, um, and, and they are in leadership position. You know, our region here in Gauteng, in Johannesburg, uh, where we are, is led by capable women. Um, um, Emma More, you know, and um, and if you look across the across the country and you look at our candidates, you'll see that we've got um, women in the in Pumalanga, in the Western Cape, who are um, in the Free State, who are going to be a premier candidates, who are our premier candidate, and who are going to legislature. If you look at our national uh, list, you know, you'll see quite a, a lot of you of women and young people. I uh, represented there as well. So I, I think uh, I agree with Nobuntu that, um, um, you know, uh, it, it takes um, all of us as a society, you know, changing our mindset and, um, and, and, and being able to be uh, intentional on what we want to achieve. And, uh, and I think that will happen. Um, in Action SA, we are quite comfortable that, uh, right. that it's happening. Probably the challenge with established parties. I think that's, uh, that's where we need to really zoom in that, you know, because, I mean, when was the last time we see um, uh, ANC having a, 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 a woman premier? Yeah, that was Nongvola Mkonyani. She was the last one, you know. Oh, um, to be fair, now she's <laughs> in the top seven, so <laughs> maybe that's not the greatest yeah, example. But, <laughs> but point made and point mm. taken. All right, I, I completely hear that. Uh, look, I, you know, I... I've tried very hard to, to allow the points to be made because I think it's important for people to hear you out. But what is not lost to me is that there are people who are so disillusioned that they struggle to hear anything. Ten seconds, which is the time we've got left for each of you. For people who are saying, I'm not even going to take part in this because everybody says the same things and nothing changes. What's your word? 30 years voting for the same political party. 
And and that's what you're getting from um, from people saying we have been voting, we've been, vo but the crux is that they've been voting for the same party. Um, let's now um, change our mindsets. Let's let's vote for something new. Uh, let's let's give these political parties um, that are contesting now an opportunity, and then judge them on their action. You know, don't don't wait for 30 years to then punish them. You know, um, um, punish them in the next election. Um, uh, but it's important that they must come out to vote because our country actually depends on them. You know, uh, we are we are we are approaching the disaster in every front, like in water, in electricity, in unemployment. You look at it. You know. All, all factors that you can look at, they are really uh, being challenged. So it's only the voter that can be able to rescue South Africa. And we are asking them to really be brave. Uh, we know it's difficult. I used to vote for ANC. Um, one day I decided to vote for another party. And that was the beginning of my freedom to understand that I can use this vote um, to be able to change South Africa. So we are calling on them to do that. And uh, 29th of, April, of May, they must vote for Action SA. <laughs> All right. And that's the time we have. We could speak till the 29th of May, but I'm sure you've got some business to get down to. Thank you for popping by at Kaya House. Really do appreciate you speaking to us. Nobuntu has a website with Build One South Africa, Funzin Gobeni with Action SA. And you, of course, always with Kaya. Thanks for watching this installment of Elections on Kaya. Make sure, of course, to always stay tuned for our next episode.